So now what we've seen is we've seen some different ways of uh, using Gaussian elimination and some different uh, forms of solutions to uh, systems of equations that we're going to see. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to look at a matrix and actually start to classify that matrix um, by its reduced row echelon form and uh, in terms of the number of solutions, whether or not it's consistent or inconsistent. Okay, so let's take a look at the three that we actually looked at. The first one here, we're going to call this A star, and this is A, and it's been augmented with B, okay, all right, and then the row reduction, RREF, of A augmented with B, and we're going to call that A star, okay, so A star, and then we have the RREF of A star, we have B augmented with some kind of B, and B also augmented with some kind of B. And we have C augmented with zero, the zero vector. And we have the RREF of C augmented with the zero vector. Okay. Let's take out some highlighted pens. Do you wanna, I wanna show you some things, okay. Now, what we want to do is we want to be able to take a look at a matrix, whether or not it be an augmented matrix or, um, well, basically, if we're looking at an augmented matrix or a, a just matrix by itself in its row reduced form to, to characterize how many solutions it has. Now, you'll notice here for A, okay, that what we have is we have our coefficient matrix, once it's been row reduced, has a row of ones along the diagonal. This is very, very special. If it has a row of ones along the diagonal and no values anywhere else, zeros everywhere else, then it's going to have one and only one solution. Okay, so that's one solution, unique solution. We saw that before. All right now, A in this case is an m by n matrix, or in this case it is a um, A is three by three. Okay, a hashtag is three by four. Okay, so this one here, that three is the n, right? So n equals three in this case. And what we've got in this case is the rank of a is three, right? One, two, three, no zero rows, three non zero rows. So rank of a, r of a equals three. And the R of a hashtag is also equal to three, okay? Because you can see in our hashtag that we have one, two, three non-zero rows, and n equals three. So notice unique solution has all three of those being exactly the same, right? R of a, the, uh, the matrix has a rank of three, um, the augmented matrix has a rank of three, and the number of columns in the non-augmented matrix is also three. Okay, next up, let's take a look at B. Now B, if we look here, what we ended up with B it was notice, remember this was the one where we had no solution, right? We had zero equal to one. And if I look here at the matrix B, okay, then what I can see is, is that there's actually a difference in the rank of the augmented matrix and the rank so the rank of B is equal to one, two, is equal to two. It has two non-zero rows, but the rank of B hashtag, right, is actually equal to three. It doesn't have any non-zero rows. There's a one down here, and so it ends up equaling three. So in this case, right, that's basically saying, hey, the augmented one has a row of zeros, and then the, or excuse me, the non-augmented uh, matrix has a row of zeros, but the augmented one does not, that means that there is some place where it's zero equals to one, right? And so in this case, the rank of B is less than the rank of B hashtag. And what we have here is an inconsistent system, right? No solution. All right. And then we have our third option here, which we knew was our infinite number of solutions. And what we'll notice here is that in fact, when we look at B, 
right? It's got a rank of three, and B hashtag has a rank of three as well. Or C, excuse me, rank of C is equal to three. Rank of C hashtag has a value of three, but N is actually equal to four, okay? And since the rank of is in fact less than n this tells me that i have an infinite number of solutions okay so i have an infinite number of solutions now notice here are a couple of things about this that um we do have that the rank of c and the rank of c hashtag are in fact the same right so consequently uh, that actually tells us that we're going to have a consistent system, just like we had in the first case. So there's our consistent system. At my matrix, as long as I don't have like a, a row in which I have some value equal to, uh, or zero equal to some value, non-zero value, then what I end up with is I actually end up with a, um, a consistent system. All right. Uh, it is only in the case when I end up with zero equals to something else in my REF that I end up with an inconsistent system. So let's actually generalize some of these things, right? So a uh, unique solution, right, is the rank of, and let's just call it A, equals the rank of, and this is an M by N um, coefficient matrix. rank of hey hashtag okay and that equals n that's how we have no we have a unique solution uh, infinite solutions again an m by n coefficient matrix the rank of a is equal to the rank of a hashtag but it is in fact less than n that we have more columns then we in fact have values, okay? And then no solution is when the rank of A is less than the rank of A hashtag. And that's when I have some kind of like zero equals one, right? And that can't happen. So consequently, that's where we end up uh, having no solution. All right. Now, let's take a look at those coefficient matrices and let's actually talk a little bit about homogeneous systems because we're going to see some things about these, these systems and, and we're going to talk a little bit about them and then we're going to kind of generalize homogeneous systems. So let's talk homogeneous systems. Okay. On the one hand, when I look at a homogeneous system, what I've got is I've got A augmented with zero is what a homogeneous system is. So it's A X equals zero. That's our homogeneous system. A is our coefficient matrix. Zero is our B in this case, okay? But if you remember when we were doing Gaussian elimination, whenever you had a zero as your solution vector, it didn't change. So no matter what you did with it, it never changed, okay? No matter if we added rows, multiplied rows, permuted rows, they stayed zeros. And so consequently, all what we want to think about and want to consider is, is that the zero, that zero vector doesn't matter, okay? It's never going to change, right? They're always going to be zeros. So the first upshot of that is the fact that if they're all zeros, then what I can never have is an inconsistent system because I'm never going to have any, any kind of like zero equals some other value. It's always going to end up being zero equals zero at the bottom. Okay, or inside of any row of zeros. So consequently, I'm never gonna end up with that no solution inconsistent system. So that's one of the first upshots that we have for homogeneous systems. Homogeneous systems are always consistent. For that reason that I stated, but here's another reason that's even stronger. So let's say I have a, a system and it says AX equals zero is a homogeneous system where a uh, homogeneous system, the vector 
the zero vector, okay, is always a solution to ax equals zero. It's called the trivial solution. This is called the trivial solution. I'm going to prove it, okay? A times zero equals zero. Good. Ta-da, proven. Doesn't matter if A is the zero matrix, could be anything we want. We multiply it by the zero vector, we end up with the zero vector, okay? And so consequently, that's the trivial solution. That means that there is always at least one solution, okay? to the system of equations a equals, ax equals zero. On the other hand, we wanna know when is it that the trivial solution is the only solution to the system. And that has everything to do with A, our coefficient matrix. What we wanna look at here is, I wanna first notice that the RREF of A here, we got A, our matrix A, the real A, is this one has ones on the diagonal and zeros everywhere else, okay? So no free variables. And so consequently, that has one solution. That one solution must be the zero solution. Or it must be zero, the zero vector. The zero vector is always a solution. And if this one has only one solution, it's got to be the zero vector. And you can kind of imagine, right? You have x1, x2, x3, OK? and we set that equal to zero, 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 right? That's literally stating that x1 equals zero, x2 equals zero, and x3 equals zero, right? So that literally says exactly that. In these other two cases, right, a case where we have a row of zeros, okay, what you'll notice in B is that we've actually got free variables. There's a pivot here in the third column and a pivot in the first column, so that leaves actually the second and fourth variables free. Consequently, infinite numbers of solutions. We've got free variables. If we have free variables, right, okay, that's gonna indicate infinite numbers of solutions. On the other hand, over here, we have no row of zeros, but we do have a free variable. Our free variable is x4, and so consequently, once again, we've got an infinite number of solutions. So, if there are free variables, okay, there are free variables in a x equals zero, right? So this is close to many theorem. Then there are infinite numbers of solutions to x equals zero. So if we've got a free variables, there it is, all right? Um, we also might wanna characterize these things in terms of ranks, okay? What you'll notice, oh, and then if there are no free variables, in the system, in x equals zero, then there is only the trivial solution to ax equals zero, namely the zero vector to ax equals zero. All right, now let's characterize a couple other things here. What I want to notice is, I look here, the rank of A equals N. Notice that the rank of A equals N, and so we have one solution, one and only one solution, right? We've got ones on the diagonal, zeros everywhere else. So the rank of A equals N, right? That's unique solution. All right. Now, over here for B, the rank of B, all right, is less than N, so infinite solutions. And the same thing with C, 
the rank of C is less than N, so infinite solutions as well. Now, really important to notice or note to, to put in there, okay, is that the rank of any coefficient matrix is never going to be um, greater than the number of columns. And you'll have to go and think about that a little bit for yourself, but it's just, it's just the truth. You'll figure it out. It's kind of trivial. Um, but so you don't have to worry about the fact that it's going to be greater than n, all right? So we just have those two, those two statements, right? One, okay, we'll call these a little mini, mini theorem here, two. We have if the rank of a, if rank of a equals n, okay, and we'll say a is m by n, then ax equals zero has only the trivial solution. On the other hand, if the if a is m by n and the rank of a is less than n, then ax equals zero has an infinite number of solutions. All right. And there we go. And this concludes our little talk about characterizing the number of solutions inside of both non-homogeneous and homogeneous systems. Um, next up, we're going to be talking about how do we know whether or not we have a unique solution to every system given only the, um, the coefficient matrix and its row reduction.